EV Revolution Show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. All right, welcome to this edition, very special edition of the EV Revolution Show. Well, I'm honored to have a very special guest with me today. So for your viewers on YouTube channel, you're seeing this via video and on the audio podcast, you're listening to this recorded via Zoom. Want to introduce my very special guest, guest excuse me, Mr. Sandy Munro. He's the Chief Executive Officer for Munro and Associates, Inc., um, let me read his bio because I've tried to shorten it down, Sandy, as much as I could because it's quite a lot sure. of stuff. But, you know, Sandy is a hands on, self made American businessman and owner of Monroe and Associates, Inc., if you're not aware of that. He is known as an extraordinary innovator and famous for his lean design methodology, which has helped many OEMs catapult their products to market domination. Monroe and Associates specialize, as I said, in lean design, but also tearing down automotive products to study and suggesting improvements and innovations. Now, my understanding that is that Sandy is an automotive engineer and started his career as a toolmaker at the Valiant Machine and Tool Company, which was a GM supplier in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. In 1978, he joined the Ford Motor Company, where he improved methods of engine assembly then in 1988, he started his own consultancy, Monroe & Associates, which is based in Troy, Michigan. In his 50 plus years of experience as a blunt and honest critic of product design, Sandy has impacted products in different industries around the world. Welcome, Sandy Monroe. Oh, thank you very much. Um, there's a couple of corrections. I don't know where okay. that one came from, but um, but I started, a, I did... Uh, <laughs> Actually, if we go back, I have very humble beginnings picking and, tomatoes. And I'd love, to, be my, I'd love to explore that. Step. Hey, I detassel <laughs> yeah. corn too, and high, you know, uh, North yeah, and Elsa yeah. Craig in I, those areas. So I, I get did, it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did all that stuff. I yeah. definitely, uh, definitely knew what I didn't want to be when I grew up. So, uh, but uh, I was a tool maker. Um, uh, I got my journeyman's ticket, but I was at other tool shops uh, to get that. When I was at Valiant, I was chief engineer. So. Mm -hmm. It's a different, a uh, little different there. Yeah. But, but the good news is that, yes, I did work at Ford and I did work, uh, I did start the company and uh, we've been, you know, relatively successful and, and it's not just uh, cars. I mean, we work on aircraft. We have a lot, of, we have a huge defense organization that, uh, that um, in essence um, um, is about one third of the company. So, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Very interesting. So uh, we we have a diverse background, and a lot of the newer you know uh, followers of yourself and watcher Sandy will know you from what you're doing on the EV front, and we'll get to that. Yeah. But I'd like to explore a little bit more about that past. You know how you've seen because you 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 grew up your working life in the automotive industry primarily, and you know there's there's been a lot of rapid change in the last decade or two, but. Uh, maybe you could tell us, you know, what your thoughts are and some of the things you saw leading up to this kind of revolution that we're seeing today. Well, um, I guess the, the best thing to do is, uh, is to talk about um, when, when I was uh, running around in the 70s and 80s and people were um, extremely worried about the environment. Um, mm -hmm. We had run into situations where, you know, um, there was the uh, uh, the famous <clears throat> gas shortage yeah, where okay. the um, Arab communities basically cut off the oil. At the oil embargo, and uh, stuff. people mm -hmm. started talking about, "Hey, what about electric cars? Why don't we Why don't we do something about uh, um, you know we've got uh, we've got plenty of resources for mm -hmm. for electricity. Why Why are we wasting time with uh, with gasoline? But as soon as that would come in, then something would go away. And in mm -hmm. the case of the embargo, they, they stopped. Uh, we just paid more for gasoline. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I should mention um, to the folks at home, I, I have a little bit of COVID. So um, I, uh, uh, I may start coughing or something like that. But, but anyway, at the end of the day, um, EVs started to look like they were going to come in and then they backed off. And then they came in a little bit and then they backed off. 
and people started thinking about insulating their house and stuff like that to try and cut down on the energy usage mm-hmm. and the uh, and the amount of CO2 that got into the air. <clears throat> CO2 and methane are two giant contributors. Exactly. So, so we've seen things come and go quite often, and um, but now uh, there's uh, there's no um, there's no chance that anyone with a with a brain um, is going to want to go back to the uh, the good old days of leaded fuel <laughs> and and um, hey let's uh, let's leave the windows open when we get the furnace on. Right. But in, in, but when I was a kid, hey. That was all cheap, and mm-hmm. um, and nobody really ha- is cognizant was cognizant of the fact that this may be uh, kicking the daylights out of the uh, planet. Yeah, we were all much more concerned about the Cold War, I think, and and some yeah. of the other things happening than we were yeah. the environment at that time to to the level that it is today. You're absolutely right. Did you see? Uh, so EVs, you know, had that kind of they were there, and, and we'll get to the 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 um, EV one in a sec because I know that you were part of that. Um, yeah. But did you see any changes in the automotive development side of things um, to, especially here in North America, that kind of put them on a different path? And I guess I'm thinking, you know, the Japanese influence at the time taking advantage with some of their products coming in, did that yeah. help steer the direction that we see possibly today? Well, um, the Japanese in, uh, invasion of uh, vehicles, in mm-hmm. essence, um, changed the corporate way of looking at what does a consumer actually get when we give them a car <clears throat> what is the um what's the uh, value proposition now prior to uh prior to world war ii um when you bought a car it would last you forever i mean it, the steel was heavy the um mm-hmm. the engines were sloppy i mean they polluted but they would last forever. And that's why you see so many Model T's, Model A's, old, old cars, they're everywhere. Then uh, after the war, um, you got the Harvard effect. Mm-hmm. So you had the whiz kids come in and they said, ah, forget all that quality, that's worthless. <laughs> Just crank them out, shove them out the door. If they, if they die, that's called built-in obsolescence. They invented mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. I have, I have very little, um, very little um, um, patience with anybody who wants to cram Harvard and uh, the MBA philosophy down my throat. Mm -hmm. So they changed everything. Well, when the uh, world changed, when the Japanese invasion happened as a result of Dr. Deming, and actually Dr. Deming, most people don't know this, but Dr. Deming was brought to to, uh, Japan <clears throat> by General MacArthur to try oh. and help them rebuild. Okay. And um, Deming had been fired by the auto industry over here uh, because uh, he kept pushing quality and they kept saying, no, <laughs> shove the junk out the door. That's Production right. is king on it's and volume. on. So he yeah. went over there and, uh, and he basically trained them. And the mm. training that he gave them uh, made an astoundingly good car. They were small, mm-hmm. but they were extremely well put together and the quality was very high and what happened well we had the oil embargo and the oil embargo even made a japanese car even more attractive Mm -hmm. so what happened initially where if you saw a japanese car in the parking lot people would throw rocks at it later on that was not the case well later on everybody was buying little japanese cars because they were fuel efficient they lasted forever they didn't have much maintenance and the dealerships were very friendly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it used to be you had to go and wake up uh, uh, when I was a kid. You had to go and wake somebody up so that they could you could buy a car off them. They were doing you a favor. <laughs> wow! And and that made a big change, a mm-hmm. huge change. So now we're into a situation where um, we have a, a relatively good car market. I mean, the cars are are, are well put together. They're as effective and efficient as they can possibly be from an emission standpoint. But the problem is, is that, I mean, you're looking at uh, the best, uh, the best carriage maker um, on the planet, but everybody wants to go to cars. That's kind of where we are. We're in that transition phase between similar to the olden days. So horses to horses and carriages to automobiles. And now we're looking at automobiles oems that uh, that produce uh, 
ICE vehicles uh, going into EVs. And just like the carriage industry wasn't quite ready for, um, um, for automobiles, um, the OEMs currently are definitely not, well, most of them are really behind the curve. So mm -hmm. absolutely, that's what's they, happening. They've been kind of watching to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I do, uh, I think I mentioned before we started the camera rolling that I do a lot of public outreach and I do these EV 101 talks. And part of that talk is, is mm -hmm. the history of EVs that they go back, yeah. they well uh, before internal combustion vehicles. So, you know, that technology yes. in essence has been around a long time. It, it came to some sort of fruition in the in the early 90s there with the, with GM's EV1. Yeah. Um, what's your short take on that whole episode? Uh, just too to ahead of its time, just kind of more to prove our no. concept? No, that was, uh, that was again, um, <clears throat> so let me give you the backstory on mm -hmm. that. Um, there, was, uh, there was a number of people at General Motors that uh, were classified as, uh, I don't know, um, forward thinking. Mm -hmm. One of them, his name was Bob Stemple. And Bob Stemple was made uh, president and CEO of General Motors. And uh, after uh, Roger Smith left and, and his, uh, his thought was, you know what, there's a new market coming. Um, he spent a lot of time in California talking to the marketing people out there. And he could see that there was something coming and he wanted uh, GM to be ready for it. So he approached the people at GM and uh, they were not enthusiastic or excited about it at all. Hmm. So he had a bit of a skunk works going. And hmm. actually that car was not designed inside the gates of General Motors. Oh, okay. It was designed at a church outside, <laughs> just outside of the gate, but uh, mm -hmm. a church that wasn't being used, a big giant Catholic church, mm -hmm. huge halls and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and Monroe and Associates, we were very small at the time. We only had like, I don't know, eight or 10 guys. All of us were put on that job. And so if you read the book, Who Killed the EV? Mm -hmm. I told them flat out, I don't want my name in there because I knew that they were going to cook it or they were going to do something different. Right. So the way that you can spot us is the consultants that made us get all of our data. That's mm -hmm. us. That was okay. Monroe and Associates. Mm -hmm. And we led... Uh, a bunch of the teams we brought in new technology from the aerospace industry uh mm -hmm. we worked with hughes on inverters and stuff like that took it mm -hmm. from the size of a suitcase down to something about the size of a briefcase and that's the best we could do at that time mm -hmm. we hit everything everything that they were asked for except for one thing range and the reason for that was because for some reason or other general motors had decided they were going to stay with lead acid batteries. Mm -hmm. Now there was nickel metal hydrate batteries that could have given us double the range, but because Delco was part of General Motors, they didn't do it. Oh. So anyway, the car, uh, we, we got it done. It was accepted uh, in, um, in the California market for sure. Uh, people were happy with mm -hmm. them. People didn't want to give them back because mm -hmm. you didn't really own them. You only That's leased right. them. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, what happened was um, they fired Stemple and um, and they disbanded that group. They stopped production and then they crushed up all the vehicles mm -hmm. um, and there's virtually none left. There are right. a couple that were stolen mm -hmm. yeah. and um, and now oh, yeah. they're kind of like reappearing. But That's right. but they uh, they truly do belong to General Motors. And it's mm -hmm. hard to say whether what would happen if they got back to GM. I'm sure that they would just crush them. But the cars were really kind of cool and way ahead of their time. The problem was General Motors is run by a lot of Harvard people. Mm. And Harvard did not see uh, the EV revolution coming at all. Right. They still haven't. And wow. that is really what's holding things back or what held things back at, the, at every automotive, North American automotive company, except for one, Ford. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um and even there there's i'm sure there's some huge revolution going on mm -hmm. and i believe that there's probably casualties on both sides but jim farley there was a good reason for him being voted as uh i can't remember his time or or fortune or i don't know i don't know read, i can't remember where i saw it but he mm -hmm. he's now one of the top 100 influencers man mm -hmm. of the year on yep. and on and on and he deserves that credit because he's the only one that's got his eyes open. The rest yeah. of them, sad. And whatever you've heard from uh, 
<clears throat> from the president of the United States, GM is not leading the pack, mm-hmm. not even close. Interesting. So, That's an interesting observation, Sandy. I mean, when you look at that, the last, uh, second last, I guess, major recession we had, and I'm trying to remember when that was. If it was 12 or nine. There's been a few, but when no, when eight, the bailouts eight, when the bailouts yeah. happened, Ford was the only one not to get not to need any financial right. assistance, right? So yeah. they obviously had had a game plan, not necessarily focused around electrics, but they had a game plan to keep that company sound and valid during a really tough time. Yeah, well, that would be uh, that'd be Alan Mullally. Mm-hmm. Alan, um, uh, I knew Alan from the C-17, uh, big mm-hmm. aircraft yeah. and yep. uh, military aircraft. And then he also brought us in uh, to help out with the 777 mm. for a little bit. And then when the 787 came out, um, it, it didn't really, it wasn't called that. But anyway, mm-hmm. when, uh, when Yellowstone, the name was, uh, code name was Yellowstone. When that came out, there were five people on the uh, team and two of them were myself and Dan McCarthy, who uh, ultimately we, we did a lot of work with uh, the 787 mm. um, to produce a, a product that was going to be, it, it, it initially started out as E and um, E was for ecology. And then later on, they turned it into economics. Mm-hmm. And then later on, it became the 787. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So Interesting. it was, um, it was Ellen Mullally who uh, bankrolled the company mm-hmm. because he could see something terrible was going to happen. And, um, and by the way, the other thing that that Ford did that was brilliant at the time was that uh, they uh, they turned the F-150, which is the golden cow, mm-hmm. into an aluminum truck um, mm-hmm. that also helped out with fuel economy and things like that. And it kind of <clears throat> gave them the image, excuse me, <coughs> gave them the image of, uh, of being the, um, the leader when it came to um, uh, and came to the ecology of the country or the mm-hmm. planet, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Um, one other thing before we get to kind of current state of where we're at and we'll <clears throat> dig a little bit there. Um, I always kind of reckon that, you know, Tesla's kind of, you know, they put together the skateboard design and that's kind of the standard now for EV platform. Oh, contrary. No. Okay. Please. Oh, no. The skateboard yeah. design came mm-hmm. out of General Motors and that guy, um, Bruce, um, I forgot his name. Anyway, mm-hmm. he came out with a skateboard design long before everybody else. Oh, really? And, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, he was in charge of advanced engineering at, uh, at GM. And uh, everybody looked at it and said, what do we need that for? What we need is a bigger V8. Maybe we should have a V10. <laughs> <clears throat> That's, uh, and so oh. anybody that came out with something that could have given General Motors a lead, mm-hmm. They wound up um, on the wrong side of um, the uh, front door. The boot. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Because I yeah. typically credit that to Tesla and, and Elon's no. thinking, and you know, with the early Model S. So no, it was uh, 10 years, yeah. uh, wait, wait, 10 years or more before that. that. Before okay. that yeah. I'll have to update my presentation that I do and just make sure I recognize uh, GM for yeah. that. But uh, I always kind of liken that platform and what you, some of the benefits that you get from that, especially the interior space side to Chrysler's cab forward concept back in the eighties. And right. is there any similarities? Did Chrysler have something good going at that point? Were they on the right track for that? Um, yeah, they were. Um, Chrysler, <clears throat> Chrysler has been our customer for a long time. Mm-hmm. The cab forward designs when Lee Iacocca was in charge, yeah, the um, that all and, came from, mm-hmm. That, that came from uh, Francois Castaigne, oh. um, one of the uh, one of the engineers, or sorry, styling guys there, who was also, he's also a superior, he's a really brilliant engineer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so he had a lot to do with uh, making Chrysler good, but, but I mean, you also had Bob, St- uh, sorry, uh, Bob Lutz. Mm-hmm. Bob Lutz, uh, I think, uh, at the time was the guy, as far as cars were concerned, and he had his thumb, he, I mean, he knew exactly what was going on in the auto industry um, right up until, um, um, I don't know how, a trader is the word I use mostly, but I've got to stop doing that. But anyway, <laughs> then you had yeah. uh, Bob Eaton, um, yeah. who sold the company to, mm. uh, to Mercedes. Mm-hmm. And uh, quite right. frankly, That's right. 
that was like selling the Empire State Building, just or actually not the Empire State Building, sorry, the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. I I really was. <laughs> I, I'm on, I was on several different shows saying that this is crap and there's, Oh no, this is a merger of equals get <laughs> real. Yeah. And, um, and Eaton wound up with a half a billion dollars in his pocket and he disappeared. A few golden parachutes there. Absolutely correct. Yeah. 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 And you mentioned Bob, I mean, he's, he's on, you know, who killed the, the EV and, and part two one, especially when they follow, you know, call, uh, Carlos and, and Bob and, and, Elon in their developments kind of focusing on the Volt, the, the initial yeah. Leaf and, and the Model S there. Um, so, you know, he does have a pivotal, pivotal aspect into this whole development and, you know, whatever. I'm sure he's still pretty positive about EVs at this point. Um, uh, he isn't uh, really in the uh, public's eye anymore. Yeah, he, I know he retired. <clears throat> he took a giant step back, backwards mm-hmm. after the um, after the banks melted. Um, mm-hmm. So um, he He's not really, uh, um, he, he, he's made a couple of mentions here and there mm-hmm. about electric vehicles and things like that. But, mm-hmm. uh, but he's, he's kind of like retired. Yeah. He's decided yeah. that, um, I think after he, <laughs> he flattened one of his planes, um, oh, came yeah. in with the landing gear up <laughs> That's right. and then he, and the press just went all over him, you know, mm-hmm. saying that maybe he's too old or whatever. So. He just took their advice and he kind of like drifted mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. In the last decade or so, you know, we've seen a lot of um, movement in the EV marketplace. You know, I mentioned the Leaf before, yeah. the original Leaf. I mentioned the Model S, you know, kind of the Tesla's groundbreaking vehicle to get them into the, you know, the road to mass market, you know, to build yeah. the factories, economies of scale, everything, all that stuff that you guys help OEMs really, really muster. Um how, what's your thought on on that that pathway that we've taken let's say since 2010 to you know maybe 2020 or something like that just just kind of pre-covid you know are you how do you think things happen there do you think they happen in a good way could have been faster slower what's your kind of take on that it's a big question so yeah um <clears throat> if we if we look at um if we look at um the uh, the time really times really started to change right after the banks melted mm-hmm. once those guys um left uh, the um uh the auto companies in essence bankrupt mm-hmm. chrysler was bankrupt jim was bankrupt even the guys in japan were in tough shape but the yep. government came quietly in and bankrolled them mm-hmm. um, that's right they have a different view on things elsewhere in germany <clears throat> and uh <clears throat> In Germany and Japan, for sure, they they yeah. look at uh, they look at uh, the manufacturing industry right? yeah. is where the money comes from. That's right. And here we don't see it quite the same way. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so they they made sure that nobody really suffered too much over there, and it was just something that they had to get through. But when we came out of that and um, and started to try and you know what's the next big step and whatnot the the focus was not on evs it was Mm -hmm. um okay the good times are here again the past is just um um, you know a glimmer we're not going to take worries about that and uh, we're just going to go ahead and um and produce cars just the way we always used to do it um and without a lot of baggage so Mm -hmm. uh chrysler for sure lost a lot of their factory capability and whatnot because it was sold off or it was just bulldozed. And so the same thing happened to General Motors only mm-hmm. in a bigger scale, much bigger scale. The tragedy was they bulldozed the wrong plants. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. one of the most modern plants that GM had was the GM truck plant, um, the GM truck plant in um, in uh, um, Pontiac. It, mm-hmm. it, it was huge and it was mm-hmm. brand new and it was spectacular. Um, and, uh, but people who didn't know what they were doing from Washington just said, Oh, get rid of that one. Oh, that's big. Throw that. Away. They oh, just, wow. they didn't know what they were doing, mm-hmm. but, but when they, you know, got rid of this boat anchor that was hanging financial boat anchor that was hanging around their neck, they, they kind of like moved quickly toward getting up to being efficient at what they knew. Mm-hmm. Um, the good old days are here again. You know, mm-hmm. the, um, future is just a reflection of the past and 
mm-hmm. on and on. So things didn't change much. Then uh, when it's not the S that made so much of an impact as it was the three, mm-hmm. when the Model course, 3 yeah. came mm-hmm. out, <clears throat> well, first there was the BMW i3. Mm-hmm. We should talk about that because mm-hmm. that really was the first real electric car that uh, that people had the opportunity to buy. The problem was it was too expensive and it didn't have a lot of range and it wasn't terribly comfortable and it looked so ugly. Mm. It was such an ugly car. Yeah. Either love um, it or hate it. <laughs> That's for sure. There's mostly no people hated it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my, me being one of them, I just could not believe because we worked a lot with, with BMW right. on the Mini. <clears throat> when they were trying to turn around uh, the uh, uh, the English operations, mm-hmm. and and I I couldn't believe that somebody could style a car so hideously. But it was the first, mm-hmm. and I will tell you when I drove that thing around, wow, this thing is fast. It was my it, God. It, everything that I had ever heard or yeah. had been discussed before was all crap. It it, yeah. it just it was just totally different. Mm-hmm. We tore it apart. We thought that everybody's going to want to know about this thing. And we found out nobody did. So it almost bankrupt <laughs> Monroe and Associates. Oh, no. oh, and I no. wasn't terribly popular yeah. <clears throat> with my own people. They said, uh, thanks uh, for Oops. throwing our bonuses down the drain. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. so anyway, but that was the first one. But mm-hmm. then the Model 3 came out. And, uh, and I went to the guys and I said, hey, you know what? I think we should tear apart a Model 3. Oh my God! There was, uh, I mean, we had already uh, taken apart the uh, the Chevy Bolt, uh-huh. um, which also came out before the Model Three, mm-hmm. and we tore that apart and we looked at it and we said, "Well, it's." Uh, I mean, they they took an existing car, they stuck a back. Mm-hmm. They did not LG. LG did that whole car, oh, okay. <clears throat> and um, and he said, "Hey, you know what? It's in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody paid us to uh, to take it apart." analyze it and tell them what came back and we told them what the good stuff was and he said they didn't want to hear about the bad stuff so i said fine that's good <laughs> okay then the model three came out and yeah. i said well we should do one of these mm-hmm. and i said there'll be banks and stuff like that that'll want to buy the uh the, the results and went mm-hmm. well mm, we started off and uh and the model three was not a good build mm-hmm. had terrible gaps and mm-hmm. Things didn't work mm-hmm. and on and on. And so uh, I panned it. And then I found out about Tesla fanboys. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They didn't like that at all. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there was a lot of uh, hate mail going around. Of course. Yeah. And then we took and looked inside the vehicle. And once we got rid of the body and we started looking at the electronics. So mm-hmm. the suspension system was purely BMW. Mm-hmm. Um five bar links um virtual ball steering um the uh the electronics were right out of a spaceship mm-hmm. i mean this thing was phenomenal mm-hmm. under the skin mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when we came up with that then we started looking at what would happen if this thing was built in a conventional factory i i'd never been and still haven't been in the free i've been in the fremont plant when it would belong to somebody else but uh, new I, I didn't mm-hmm. like the plant then and i was pretty sure yeah. i wouldn't like it now but <laughs> if we would have built that in a modern factory using you know conventional techniques mm-hmm. i came back and said well it looks like looks like this is going to be about 35 percent gross profit mm-hmm. which for a car company is fabulous mm-hmm. uh, all that turned into there's tesla lovers and then there's ev haters mm-hmm. and um, a couple of guys came after me and uh, the next thing i know because we do uh, some defense work. And mm-hmm. so, um, I had to phone the FBI and say, Hey, you know what? These guys are talking about bombing the place and stuff oh, like that. Geez. So we got yeah. police protection 24 hours a day, wow. That's but I'm telling you, <clears throat> it's a very emotional, it's not just, uh, the technology and whatnot, mm-hmm. a lot of emotion that runs in, um, in this, uh, this change and, um, and it's fueled by, uh, people with very, very strongly held um, uh, views, and uh, sometimes it gets mm-hmm. scary. You know? Absolutely is, yeah. I know when I don't praise Tesla, sometimes I I can see it in the comments and stuff because I, you know, try to I keep an objective mind about everything. And yeah. Tesla has their good points and bad points. I, I certainly understand. Uh, again, I got into this marketplace after the Model Three reveal, 
Uh, I think that that was a tipping point in the automotive landscape for EVs. It was. We woke yep. up kind of, you know, and uh, and my second tipping point that I think was the Ford F-150 Lightning because it goes yeah. to that other, a completely oh, no, was different it? It was marketplace. Mustang. Mustang. Oh, the Mustang. Yeah. The Mustang. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, up until, well, even right now, my second favorite vehicle out there is the Mustang. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that isn't because of blue, uh, whatever they call it, uh, blue cruise or whatever. And that I'm not a big fan of. Mm -hmm. But the car itself <clears throat> has some absolute shades of brilliance. Mm -hmm. Brilliance that I was not expecting. I didn't even want to analyze. <clears throat> what I wanted to do was I thought that VW was going to come up with the ID4 and we were going to tear that apart and I was going to be singing their praises and saying mm -hmm. things like, you know, this is a, a Tesla beater and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, no, that mm -hmm. didn't work out. We didn't even buy one. Um, the, uh, we, we had some people send us an electric motor from VW. We mm -hmm. analyzed that. We weren't allowed mm -hmm. to cost it and whatnot. And I did a video on it. The mm -hmm. motor's brilliant, but the rest of the car is not. Mm -hmm. It was the B team that, that worked on that. So I didn't buy a, a, a BM, a VW. And then the um, and then the Mustang came out, and uh, you can see it in my video. I walk over and I'm I'm looking at it for the first time, because they surprise I they like to surprise me and mm -hmm. I don't like surprises. <laughs> I walked around the corner and I looked at it and I said, "We're going to analyze the Mexican Mustang." Mm -hmm. And I walked around Sorry. and I said, "Mustang shouldn't have four doors." Yeah, and yeah. that's that's kind of like how I started off. Sure. Yeah, and I like the door handles because there's no door handle. And I like this and I like that. And the next thing, you know, I was liking a lot of stuff. And I said, can we buy this? Let's tear this one apart. Because we had a whole, I mean, for us, the, the tearing apart of these things and making videos, that's a very minor sideline. We, we do yeah. new product development mostly, like mm -hmm. for, uh, things that are coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so anyway, we bought it and we started tearing it apart. And there's a lot of things inside there that I really, really liked. Mm -hmm. and um and they basically <clears throat> they basically took number two spot so tesla's number one for its number two mm -hmm. with with the mustang and now the the lightning the lightning mm -hmm. the thing that came out today in bloomberg i don't know if you've seen it but they um they're they really uh really pounced on the on the f-150 mm -hmm. i mean it's just genius uh the way ford is doing things versus the way general Motors. i mean Hummer, what, are you kidding me? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <clears throat> Nine tons of, yeah. are you kidding me? This is yeah. just, I, I couldn't believe my eyes when I when I read these data points. Mm -hmm. And how much? Who's mm -hmm. going to buy this thing? <clears throat> Apparently over 65,000 people to have, so <laughs> believe it or not. Well, but, yeah. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's a number that uh, can uh, diminish real quickly. Mm. Um, I think once the, uh, once the lightning comes out, yeah. um, There'll be a lot of canceled orders. Yeah. I, I can't imagine uh, having or wanting one of those things. I, no. I just uh, totally mind boggling. I couldn't so, for me, but maybe it's a bit of a halo vehicle. Maybe it's a bit of a showboat to show that, you know, this well, is where electrification can go. It can go to, to these kind of uh, extents. I, I think the F-150 electrifying again, you know, Mustang, you're absolutely right. A, a marquee brand by Ford, right? Everybody knows them, them by the Mustang. Yeah. I think, you know, maybe the 64 and a half Mustang was probably one of the only other vehicles prior to the Model 3 that had any sort of reservations, like a lineup or a big groundswell. Yeah, yeah. But people were able to see that vehicle, you know, when, when, when you had a, over 100,000 people put a thousand bucks down without even seeing the Model 3, and then it skyrocketed from there. That shook, you know, the automotive landscape. And then for Ford to take their Mustang, yeah. Electrify it, another marquee <laughs> brand, more so because the F-150 is their best seller, right? Internally and and yeah. across the globe, it's one of the best selling vehicles. It's a big chance for them to do that. But I agree. I think I think you know what you said about Jim earlier. They've they've done it very smartly. They they know yeah. their consumer base and they want to make sure that the product yeah. they're going to give them, because you know most Ford uh, truck buyers are loyal. Most GM are and and Dodge. They kind of run in those camps that I understand. So if you're going yeah. to impact those consumers, you want to keep them happy and give them what they want. Do you think that these vehicles are going to do that for them? Well, I know so, for sure that Ford yeah. has just talked us out of keeping the, um, we have a Ram, a diesel mm -hmm. Ram mm -hmm. um, 
2500 and um i'm looking to electrify and uh, ram has nothing not nothing yet for me yeah so, they say 2025 um, or something but yeah so yeah. we have uh we had um two i believe we have two um um, f-150s <clears throat> that we're going to get to, uh, mm -hmm. to one was to tear down the other one was to uh to drive around and see what one of those is going to become <clears throat> excuse me <It's> okay. <clears throat> yeah. one of those is going to become our company truck mm -hmm. um we're going to sell a ram and um and we're going to have that nice. easy because quite frankly i've seen that thing top to bottom they they took uh, myself and corey to the uh, test track we mm -hmm. weren't allowed to drive the car because we're mm -hmm. on board property, mm -hmm. but we we got a chance to look at it. Oh my God, I had a sorted <laughs> past my um, uh, I I picked tomatoes and uh, yeah. detasseled corn and yeah. I even shelled walnuts. Oh, um, I also worked a lot in construction because mm -hmm. um, you know I did anything for a buck. Um, mm -hmm. We yeah. weren't terribly rich when I grew up. Anyway, um, so. When I uh, uh, when I had to work on construction, I mean, <laughs> you've got to log, you got to lug things around. You've mm -hmm. got to um, you got to have a generator for power. Yep. You uh, have to have an air compressor. Mm -hmm. All that stuff comes free in that truck. That's right. If I was a, if I was in construction, there there wouldn't even be a chance I would think about anything else. Mm -hmm. I got my power supply right here. Are you kidding right. me? Yeah. You drive it to the job site. Everybody plugs in. Everybody's uh, going like crazy. This is the this is the vehicle for anybody that uh, that, that wants to make extra profit. Mm -hmm. It's a, it, this thing is going to be a money maker. <clears throat> so for totally me, um, we don't need all of those features, but I like the idea that um, that we're going to be fooling around with uh, something that 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 fills the need. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> could a Hummer do that? No. In fact, um, oh. I, I I should look down here a little bit. Yeah, There's I see that <laughs> next uh, vehicle. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm going to be uh, I'm in on uh, all day long uh, with uh, with the um, cyber truck. And mm -hmm. by the way, we do not work. We don't work for Tesla. They don't need us. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, I but I I, I actually. I uh, may have a lot more money now than I did when I was a kid, but at the end of the day, I don't throw uh, I don't throw my cash around like right. as it works. Say I throw nickels around like there were manhole covers. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, but I, I want something that's going to last for me, and I know sure. that the cyber truck is going to be my last vehicle purchase. Mm -hmm. I have a Rivian. Actually, I don't have it. My wife has the Rivian. She. Mm -hmm. You can drive the Model Three. So anyway, <laughs> she's got that, and yeah. um, and uh, the Cybertruck is going to be my my daily ride. And then, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, I've already got uh, a Model Three for driving around. Mm -hmm. We're going to be looking at a Model X shortly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys from Dirty Tesla is bringing it around so we can have a look at. Mm -hmm. I I think that that'll take the place of our minivan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, the Cyber or sorry the F one fifty Lightning. Mm -hmm. that's going to be our new truck and nice. um and i i don't know what's happening in canada right now but uh, but i do know that um um at monroe and associates we've got four uh charging stations that are available to anybody that's got an electric car and okay. they're almost always full i mean mm -hmm. wow. the guys are always uh, plugging in we have got a lot of guys that to uh, that have electric vehicles now good Good. Yeah, we're starting to see more workplace rollout. You know, the feds have come out with a pretty ambitious budget over the last week, which has a lot of EV and, and incentives. They're carrying forward the incentives, increasing the thresholds to get some of those pickup trucks and larger SUVs yeah. under the umbrella. So it's all it's all good to help stimulate the growth. We just need the province. You know, if we get a, a color change June 2nd here, we'll have to wait and see if that helps promote EV uh, incentives further and EV investments. If it stays blue, I'm pretty, I, I, I know that we're not going to get incentives, but there'll be some other, maybe some knowledge, uh, monies for, for knowledge expansion and for EV charging infrastructure and for workplace and things like that. But uh, we'll have to wait and see provincially. What <clears throat> well, I will tell you the one thing that made me a little bit happy was that, um, 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 who is it? Uh, who's putting the, uh, who's putting the battery plan up in Windsor? 
Oh, Stellantis. Mm -hmm. Stellantis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Stellantis? Yeah, they have battery. that car. Isn't that a battery plant? Yeah. Uh, Is that right? I thought it, I thought it was Cattell or uh, I thought it was one of the Chinese. Anyways, oh, somebody CATL, maybe a couple mm -hmm. of billion. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, I think somebody uh, is helping out my uh, birthplace um, a little bit. Um, and um, I know approximately where it's going to be. It's near mm -hmm. the near the Ford uh, Essex engine plant. Oh, OK. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, too bad they just couldn't use that instead mm -hmm. of building a new. Yeah, interesting. A new facility. Yeah. But anyway, um, that's good news for Windsor. I'm glad to hear yep. that something's happening there. Uh, but. Yeah, but at the end of the day, um, uh, Canada really needs to step it up and figure out how to get. And you know what? The only real, true uh, solid-state battery is um, is out of Montreal, that mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. and uh, that um, that's the only one. I've I've talked to everybody else in the semi-solid-state battery right. business, right? Uh, but uh, but that's the only one that really works. But you got to heat it up to. 160 degrees it's like wow that's that, that doesn't make me happy so mm -hmm. but uh, but in europe mercedes is using those things all over the place in their buses and it's going to be mm -hmm. in brazil as well oh, they're okay. uh, they're looking at a redesigned uh, uh bus for uh, i think sao paulo is going to be the first one but uh, mm -hmm. but it'll uh, it, it it's coming it's coming quicker than uh th that factory and then they need it you know really and truly um I don't know who was in power or what they were thinking, but you know, uh, BYD wanted to put a bus plant in Windsor and now they're putting up the third bus plant, the third bus plant in California. Mm -hmm. Wow. Somebody really missed a boat on that. Yep. I, I agree uh, with you. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing for sure. One thing I can tell you after being in his business for a while, Almost no politician has a brain. Well, at least not a business <laughs> brain anyway. So. No, I agree. Uh, there's some great people in Windsor. I, I had a tour of the Pacifica plant, uh, but just before COVID hit a couple of years ago, yeah. I have a yeah. lot of friends. I go down there a lot. I have some clients down there as well. So uh, very great place. And, and we are yeah. trying as a country. I think we realize that we missed the boat and some opportunities. And now we need to turn that around. And, you know, we've got yeah. some projects like Project Arrow going by APMA and some others, which are great to kind of help showcase our potential, but we really need the major OEMs to make those investments. Hopefully, maybe the airflow that Chrysler just, in, you know, uh, another announcement yesterday about that. Maybe that might be a product that'll come to Canada or some components. Um, you know, I know Ford's yeah. going to do the, the, the Lincoln Oakville, electrify those. Um, uh, maybe the GM Oshawa plant, maybe as a next phase. That might get do you think that that might get some electrification in the future um i i know that there's been a lot of conversation about mm. that but you got to yeah. remember when you when you start looking at uh making ev powertrains it's battery first all the rest of the stuff i can i can make in a broom closet not mm. really mm -hmm. but yeah but i mean it, you don't need much room to make uh electric motors mm -hmm. inverters uh, mm -hmm. uh stuff like that it's just if i was uh somebody that uh, was in power i'd be uh i'd be over um in china um right now uh talking to Geely or um or byd which mm -hmm. i think is going to take over quite a bit of market share mm -hmm. as soon as um as soon as the pieing public is demanding um electric vehicles and the locals can't supply them yep uh, the Chinese are going to have that door opened yeah. and uh, they will come in and invade just like they did in China yeah. or sorry, in Japan, when Japan came mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be a, a whole new day. So I agree. Uh, and, we're, we're, we're almost there, right. From that supply demand. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, Geely, as you said, BYD and others, they've been building product for some time. A lot of that product is available in other uh, world markets, but not yeah. here in North America. I get, Every time I bring some of those brands up, I get a little bit of, you know, negative comments sometimes about people not yeah. wanting to buy China and stuff like that. But I mean, look, just look in your house, look what we have. I mean, it's almost all made overseas at some point, right? So um, uh, here's the thing, doing some people things. forget this, but you know what? Uh, we did have this war uh, with Japan. <laughs> yeah. And shortly after that war, my mm. dad, there's no way he would buy anything Japanese. That's, right. uh, that's a fact. Right. And my uncle who had been tortured during second world war, Mm -hmm. he wasn't a giant fan um mm -hmm. 
Of course. I mean, there was a lot of uh, a lot of guys that were in the Second World War yeah. not interested. Animosity but you know what? Area. At the oh. end of the day, I'm, wait a minute. I'm going to buy this pile of junk that probably isn't going to last me two years, or I'm going to buy a car that's going to keep me, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, that I can feel good about for the rest of my life almost. It's going to be the same sort of deal because yeah. when people talk about, oh, yeah, cheap Chinese car, are you joking? No. These yeah. things are fabulous. In fact, we have one in our uh, in our shop right now. Mm-hmm. It's a um, it's a uh, Skywell. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and by Imperium. And that's imported into Canada. That mm-hmm. comes into Vancouver. Vancouver. And then mm-hmm. um, and then uh, we we bought it uh, uh, through Canada. So we could get okay. it in. And man, I'm telling you what, I've had a lot of OEM executives that have walked through, sat in the car, drove it around a little bit, looked at the price tag, looked at the quality and said, I can't beat this. This wow. is this is really something. Mm-hmm. Now, is uh, is everything going against those guys? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the guys that are in charge of that uh, importing group are are just getting their asses kicked. <laughs> um with their stock and stuff like that and why well it's it doesn't got to, it doesn't have um obligation yet right okay well uh what happens when it does i mean really at the mm-hmm. end of the day these kinds of uh, entrepreneurs that are trying to bring these things in they're going to win and um and i think that what canada needs to do is go and knock on some doors i mean beijing automotive mm-hmm. they've got they could do something Mm-hmm. Um, actually, if I was going to be Canada and I was going to, uh, or the, uh, the prime minister or at least a premier, mm-hmm. um, I would be, uh, I would be knocking on the door of, um, of a great wall yeah. that that's a really sure. spectacular yeah. SUV. I mean, those, those cars are just phenomenally good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a whole bunch of Chinese companies. There is. Um, that that uh, that have fabulous vehicles that are coming over, forty um, percent uh, EV market share. So they're doing something yeah. right. I mean, if it was junk, they wouldn't. Yeah. You know, the Chinese people even at some point c- couldn't buy everything if it was junk. Um, before we get to, a, we'll, we'll end the show with co- some a quick lightning round about what you think of certain sure. vehicles. But prior to that, you, you were talking about the manufacturing and and the challenges that come from that by some automakers. I know you, on your shirt, you were recently, of course, at Austin Giga last week. Um, yeah. Understand you got your a bit of a surprise there walking through the plant and kind of really understanding about their modular design that uh, they've kind of done something different. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, their modular design is vastly different because <clears throat> at the end of the day, um, their modules were made right there. Vertical mm-hmm. integration is uh, is a big thing with Tesla, and the reason for that is because none of the um, none of the tier ones would would work for uh, or work with Elon. None of them. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they said, you know, you're you're just a flash in a pan. Forget it. We, we don't we don't need you. Mm-hmm. And um, and so consequently, um, he had to do it all himself. So <laughs> when I went through that facility and found out that on the fourth floor. They bring in uh, chemicals and um, and uh, media, and they turn it into battery cells, mm-hmm. and then the battery cells are dropped down through the floor and into the battery uh, battery trays to make trays. the yeah. battery module, mm-hmm. and then that drops down a floor and it goes right into the car. Wow! Uh, multi-level factories are terribly inefficient unless you can figure out how to make them work really well for you, mm-hmm. and they did that. I mean, superbly. And when I looked at the, we walked through the place and I, and they, they gave us a little uh, map that, Mm -hmm. uh, that showed two floors. There's four floors. They didn't talk too much about the other two floors, but I'm telling you what, when I went down and I had a look at all that stuff and, and um, um, if, if people are really interested, we took some, some pretty good pictures and, um, and video and whatnot. And you can hear me Mm-hmm. walking around if you go to monroe live uh uh youtube mm-hmm. you can hear me I'm, I'm just totally blown away by the by the brilliant engineering by the uh incredible and the and and then they can expand so mm-hmm. elon musk said oh we're going to make a half a million vehicles here mm-hmm. okay you know what elon musk um says what 
what he wants. I, I've been to a lot of plants. That's 11 million square feet. Mm -hmm. 11 million square 11 feet. 11 million to do that That's kind of number. That's a big yeah. plant. And yeah. I realized that he's made, he's got his own cushion room. They make their own seats. Mm -hmm. Nobody does all this stuff anymore. That's right. Again, yeah. That was uh, that was high price consultants from uh, from uh, Boston that, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just give that to somebody else. You don't want to farm it out. Yeah. Johnson controls exactly. and all these other guys. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you walk through that facility and you mm -hmm. see that they're making their own IPs and stuff. Yeah. The uh, the best thing that, that Tesla got or Elon Musk got was a no from all of the, uh, from all of the, uh, uh tier suppliers. Interesting. Yeah. He, uh, he, he took that, uh, kick in the mm -hmm. head mm -hmm. and, um, and he's giving it right back. So that, wow. that plant can at least produce a million vehicles a year, at least. Interesting. Probably do you think, more. do you think the other OEMs should look at this approach or, or would they, they, I guess? Depth. I yeah. don't think, um, the only thing, I mean, what are they, the biggest thing for them is what do they do with the engine plants and the transmission plants? What are they going to do with the axle plants? What are they going to do with um, those facilities that they've got that aren't needed by the, mm -hmm. uh, by the, um, by the electric car? That's right. They've got True. some serious, uh, they got some serious issues. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know what, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. I really mm -hmm. don't. But I do know one thing. There's going to be a lot of unlucky uh, union workers. A tremendous number of right. unlucky union workers, right. um, because there's going to be nothing for them to do, mm -hmm. especially because of the outsourcing deal. I mean, right now almost everybody is outsourcing uh, electric motors. Everybody's mm -hmm. outsourcing uh, the little gearboxes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's outsourcing the uh, the electronics and the batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, not much left to kind of build there on your own. There's, uh, if mm -hmm. I was, uh, if I was going to give um, uh, any advice to the CAW, it'd be um, maybe you should uh, think about what your next phase of your life is going to be uh, doing. Uh, you know, doing a job. It's not going to be the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. the guys in the car mm -hmm. plants, yeah, they they're they're probably going to get converted and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a feeder plant of any kind, mm -hmm. yeah, get out, find something else to do. That's true. That's true. Interesting. I wanted to just quickly, before we get to the end, ask you about some of the newer models that are hit the roads this year. Um, I mean, in North America alone, there's well over 30 new vehicles that are slated yeah. to come out, whether they actually make it out, but they're slated. So, you know, we haven't seen this kind of, of amount of EVs, you know, come out in a short period of time or announced in, since yeah. you know, the beginning. So that's good news. And I want to ask your question. So uh, let's start with Hyundai's Ionic 5. Just got named a whole bunch of awards yesterday, World yeah. Car of the Year, stuff like that. Right. What's yeah. your quick uh, impression on that one? Hyundai um, is definitely leading the parade. Now, we haven't taken one of those apart yet, mm -hmm. but um, that's just because the cost to, to buy those through a broker, we never we never uh, uh, put in our name early enough, but now oh, yeah. we'd have to buy mm -hmm. it through a broker. And the price is almost double. I can't oh, afford that. Geez. So, yeah. but uh, but uh, Hyundai and um, and Kia, mm -hmm. they are they are definitely uh, two companies that are well, it's actually one. But anyway, yeah, they're two companies, yeah. two mm -hmm. badges that uh, that really make a uh, make a difference. Mm -hmm. They really really work in well. And then you've got Volvo with the Polestar, which is really Geely. Mm -hmm. Geely um, Geely is a a tremendous, I mean, these guys are customers. I should do, tell you right now, <laughs> uh, almost every car company in China was a customer of Monroe and Associates. And what were we doing over there? We were teaching them to design uh, mm -hmm. very efficient, uh, very efficient vehicles. And it is what it is, folks. I mean, they were interested, nobody else was. And um, uh, the, the Polestar is a really good vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, if we look at, um, and like I say, the, well, I, I'll let you, what, what, what other, uh, I was just going to add, uh, be, uh, before we get the others and the third, I guess, air, you know, um, angle on that triangle for the Koreans would be Genesis too, because they're all using yeah, the right. GMP all, platform. Yeah. So yeah. Hyundai Motor Group has really got a good thing going. I was already impressed with what they did with their existing vehicle and electrifying yeah. them like the soul and the, the Nero. Um, and the key and the um, <coughs> Kona, yeah. you know, I mean, they did really good stuff with them. So uh, the next level up is great. 
Uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, certainly um, the Polestar 2. And then, you know, you mentioned Volvo. So we have the XC40 Recharge, the C40 Sportback. Um, I, I've reviewed uh, the XC40, great vehicle, kind of expensive. Uh, your yeah. thoughts on that one? Have you had a chance to look at that one? Uh, no, I haven't. However, mm -hmm. um, the kind of expensive is um, mm -hmm. kind of like what the future is holding. Yeah, you're not going to see the um, you're not going to see cheap um, cheap cars coming out, mainly because the ICE vehicles are going down, so mm -hmm. that brings the price up, mm -hmm. and EVs are going up, and eventually they'll get to a point where they can bring the prices down. But we're in that that nasty zone where right. uh, cheap is not even even used cars. I'm not 100 percent right. sure. What it's like in Canada right oh, now, but it's the same. The US. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could yeah. almost sell my, I have a year and a half old model three long range. I can almost sell it for what I bought it for almost. It's and, not far off. Right. <laughs> yeah. We've had, we've had offers that are higher yeah. uh, than, uh, than what we paid for, for the model three that we use for the company. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's a very, it's a very different kind of a world. And I right. never really been in a, in a place mm -hmm. like this before ever mm -hmm. so we're staying with with some of the overseas for a sec how do you think beamer has stepped up so you mentioned their i3 before as an yeah. integral um you know root root cause i guess for what we're seeing today um i've currently mm -hmm. got the i4 i'll look at the ix they've been doing a lot more push into the fully electrification yeah. realm you feel confident about them I think that um, Ford and BMW will probably be the quickest to uh, to catch up if you want to look at mm -hmm. what we would classify as normal or conventional uh, kinds of um, North American rides. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I think that others are going to have a real struggle. Um, I have not. Uh, I haven't. We haven't. Uh, I've been kind of busy and really and truly, like I said, I make most of my money. Or sorry, the company makes most of its money on new product development sure and uh yeah. and i've been in lots of meetings and negotiations and things like that with new product development mostly actually outside of the big car business and i we mm -hmm. we didn't talk about that but there's the small car business that uh, that uh, i think is really what's so if you look at aptera and you look at archimoto mm -hmm. and you look at no bay and you look at these little three-wheel cars and you say oh yeah well who's going to want that Go and talk to the kids. That's where all the real. If mm. you're if you're in a a marketing position, you should be talking to people who are seven years old to about fourteen, because that's who's going to be buying the next generation of cars. Mm -hmm. And those guys don't want anything that stinks. They right. think their parents are polluting the planet. They hate their yep. parents because they uh, <laughs> they're driving these gas guzzlers. And I would say that thirty percent of uh, of my viewing audience, and we get. Like about a hundred thousand hits uh, mm -hmm. uh, per video. Yeah. Um, they're mostly they're mostly kids, mm -hmm. and they they watch them, they watch them at, at recess. Holy mackerel! I there was absolutely <laughs> uh, I that was totally blown away when I when I started listening to uh, the kids talking outside of the Giga factory or or holy mackerel! Mm -hmm. I I just totally blown away. So yeah. I I'm telling you what those guys are going to make the big difference. They can't afford uh, a nice vehicle, uh, and um, and they don't want to buy a. Sorry, they can't afford a new EV mm -hmm. um, or a used one. Well, guess what? They're going to go for. They're going to mm -hmm. go for an Aptera. They're going to go for an Archimoto. They're going to go right. for a Nobe. They're going right. to go for anything right. that they can truly afford that meets the uh, meet, that that makes their heart happy. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that's where I think that we didn't talk about it, but. I see yep. a huge yep. opportunity for these smaller vehicles that are going to fill in uh, the market just the way the Japanese yeah. did it. I totally agree. And even, you know, expanding that to smaller vehicles in general, which isn't a mainstay of the North American market. Canadians used to yep. be, but now we follow the U.S. But, you know, we're in Europe. There's much more selection, much more choice, much more smaller vehicle yeah. EVs that are available, not some of the bigger ones. So their their affordability is, is much better in Europe, as an example. And of course, mm -hmm. China, because they have that that selection, um, you know, Mercedes, of course, going full in uh, on their electrification. I mean, it's a luxury brand. So, you know, any any quick thoughts about uh, about them? Well, they, they moved a little, quite a bit too slow. They, mm -hmm. they, uh, they're, 
there's three or four different levels. I think that Tesla obviously is like a rocket ship. It's way ahead yep. of everybody. Yep. Then you look at uh, the Chinese and their influence mm -hmm. in Europe and um, and whatnot. They come in second. Then um, then you start looking at the um, um, the North American guys. And like I said, mm -hmm. the only guys that I can point at and say, here's the guys that are going to actually make it uh, is Ford. The other guys, not so much. Mm -hmm. And then and uh, and in Europe, BMW. Uh, yes. Uh, Volvo is really Chinese. I don't want to include mm -hmm. them. Um, Hyundai and whatnot. They're they're the they're gonna they're gonna invade mm -hmm. Europe in a huge way. Yeah. I I uh, I think that the um, the biggest the biggest disappointment me for me was um, VW. Oh, I was gonna ask you <clears> about that. What the hell eh? happened there? Okay. I mean, Interesting. Yeah, Dietz has tried to get that that place organized or moving in the right <laughs> direction, and uh, it has been. It has been miserable. They, they've mm -hmm. tried to uh, fire him several times in one right. 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 Um, the, but the uh, idea, you, you talked about the ID4 before, and I, I thought, I think it's a decent valued BEV. I'm going in with that, with that perception that it's a value practical. It's not going to give me all the bells and whistles, but it'll give me decent range, decent charging curve, and I'll be well, able to use it for 10 years. I don't know. Well, um, uh, I have had more people send me more pieces of information, mm -hmm. especially about uh, some of the uh, motors and pumps that oh, okay. uh, that have um, failed in the ID4, and it mm -hmm. takes months, months to get these things. Wow! Um, and then there's uh, there's problems with charging these things. Uh, Electrify America chargers are owned by VW. I, I mean, same with Electrify and, Canada, and they don't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you kidding me? I mean, yeah. uh, I was really horrified. And then they a lot of quirky things that mm -hmm. um, really didn't work out well. Um, so um, VW needs to put the A team on there and they, they're going to have to make some hard decisions like um, okay. the Saxony group, um, which is the union. They don't um, they don't want to lose engine plants. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, because they have so many of them. Right. Um, That's right. Uh, and they're they're a thirty percent voting block. Mm. They're not uh, they're not enthusiastic, and they're going to hold everything back. They 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 think that the good old days are going to come back somehow. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. And nobody's been able to convince them. Like I say, they're the they're they're primarily pushing to get Dietz out and bring somebody in that's uh, that's going to have a more mm -hmm. favorable mm -hmm. view of, um, of ice vehicles but other other vehicles in the in the vw group umbrella you know the uh, porsche Taycan, well, porsche yeah porsche Audis, Audi. you know they seem right. to be doing so well they have yeah they have some of the most limited ranges for the size mm -hmm. of the battery that you could ever imagine mm -hmm. and basically not so many people can afford a porsche Taycan mm -hmm. or right. or an audi they they're they uh it's like the same they must have the same marketing um, consultants as General Motors. <laughs> hey, I got it. Let's uh, let's do the Ionic and uh, or sorry, not the Ionic. What do they call it? The um, the Limerick and the um, or the Lyric, and the, yeah. uh, yeah. and the or Lyric, I should yeah. say, in the uh, in the Hummer. Yeah. Okay, who's going to afford that? Yeah. Not so many people. Yeah. I don't get it. I I think that uh, uh, I think that uh, Tesla made made it clear hey the model 3 is a good thing you should buy that and then mm -hmm. coming out with the uh, the model y perfect i mean mm -hmm. that's the car that i recommend the most to most mm -hmm. people that's you can't beat it uh it's gonna it's gonna be the best car you've ever had in your life you know they're uh, great vehicles i mean again i own a model 3 as well in a year and a half i've put almost forty thousand kilometers so I, I drive it it's a daily driver and put a lot of use on it there are a lot of people in the consumer base that don't like Tesla for whatever reason and, and need to look at others and or have their own opinions. So it is good that we're seeing more OEMs make the choice. You mentioned GM. I was going to bring them up, you know, with the, with the, now that the, the new bolts are moving off the line again, they've they've got their recall uh, done enough that they could start continuing forward. I think, you know, the Bolt EV and EUV are good value, all practical EUVs, uh, EVs again at a low at a, at a lower price to get people in, especially as a secondary vehicle. That's another market that I try to push is 
I walk around my subdivision and I see at least two cars in the, every driveway, if not more. So if you don't yeah. want to make a primary, you know, buy a, a good cost effective EV and get your feet wet that way, learning about it. What do you think, you know, about GM, not to go too long, but with, you know, the Lyric, I mean, the Lyric's coming in at 69 Canadian, that's cheaper than a Model 3 long range. It doesn't have all the mm. same specs. We don't know a lot of the specs yet. They claim over 300 miles, but um, if you're comparing those kind of price points, the three and Y are expensive up here. So I'd like to see like, you know, sub sub $40,000 vehicles starting the market to really yeah. get to the mass markets. What's your take on GM from that perspective? Well, first for the sub um, 40 grand, that's where, uh, that's where that uh, the guys over in Vancouver um, mm -hmm. pushing the, um, <clears throat> the Skywell, the Imperium mm -hmm. Skywell. Uh, there you go. Um, you can get that, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, a lot nicer than what you're going to get from a Lyric. But, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I um, I I know that uh, uh, the the trick you put out a number that sounds hey that's cheaper than this, mm -hmm. and then you get in oh yeah I, I would like to have sun visors, <laughs> yeah I, I would like to have uh, yeah. covers on the seat, yeah. and the next thing you know you're it's hugely expensive. You're up, yeah. Almost the BMW so, model. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah, yeah. It's the trick. You mm. get them in the door, and then the next thing you know, you're, you have to sell your house to buy the car. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, um, uh, I haven't had a chance to uh, drive a Lyric. I wasn't invited to their special event. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get. I don't get very many special event uh, invitations by uh, by the local guys right, anymore. Right um and, and i only I, get a uh, few at a time i don't get a ton either but yeah but at the end of the day i think that uh the biggest problem uh, when you bring out a car that uh, doesn't look like it's making any money like the bolt mm -hmm. uh if you don't make money in a company you uh you can't get investors to sure. give you money so that you can retool that's right and um uh i don't i never could understand the 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 financial uh, razzle dazzle and I worked at mm -hmm. Ford and I worked in finance staff and I really right. it was a mystery to me I thought you had to make money on every car and I didn't mm -hmm. realize that you know it's a it's a different kind of world I I don't understand so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there I do know though mm -hmm. that Wall Street loves GM mm -hmm. and um, they'll do anything they can to to help them they're out. spending a ton on marketing there's no doubt about that <laughs> yeah, place. that's what they do uh, they, we know we know Stellantis Europe has a lot of things going they you know they've announced yeah. their game plans and their strategies for the decade and beyond so we should right. start seeing more from Chrysler and Jeep and and there are different divisions as well um, get vehicles do you have pretty good yeah. hopes for them um, I have no idea what's going on with Stellantis mm -hmm. um, I I um, I used to have them as a huge customer and mm -hmm. then uh, they decided they didn't want to work with us anymore. Mm -hmm. That was during COVID. Their people did. I mean, the people at Chrysler, absolutely. But yep. the Europeans um, didn't really care for us. So mm -hmm. we lost that okay. contract. And that was like 60% of our business. So mm -hmm. COVID comes and 60% uh, of the business disappears. That's why we actually... Uh, tore apart the Model Y because uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we got that like two days before uh, the governor shut the, all the companies down. Oh, yeah, yeah. So our good luck was that our guys could work from home on the product. So mm -hmm. we would there would be there's some people that were allowed to come in because they were um, management or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, critical folks or whatever. So uh, there was three or four of us that would uh, take off the corner of a wheel, mm. you know, a wheel and the suspension and whatnot, pull that off and then call somebody up, come and get this. And they'd come with their pickup truck or, uh, or an SUV or something. Mm. We'd throw it in the back and away they'd go. Somebody else would mm. get the seat, somebody else would get this. So we could, uh, we could work from home. Um, and, uh, and then when it came back, I'd give the explanations on YouTube and, and uh, if it wasn't for subscribers and and patreons and um and uh, people buying bits and pieces off the cars that we were tearing them apart we would mm -hmm. have been bankrupt so but yeah. since then we've had very little uh, to do with chrysler okay uh, i don't think they're in the top three 
two or three percent. No, they still they've got a ways to go there. That's for sure. And just like, you know, Honda has to catch up on the on the EV side. You know, they've got this partner with GM partnership with GM that we've been told over the last couple of weeks. And at least Toyota now has the BZ4X, if I've got that right. And with the cousin being the um, Subaru Solterra, you know, kind of jointly developed there. Seems like there I'm seeing some first reviews, some early drives on those things. Seems like pretty average kind of be you know evs starting at under 45 grand canadian or around 40 Mm -hmm. us do you think they're going to do okay i think that everybody will do kind of okay Mm -hmm. but i think that the guys that are really going to make some headway are going to be the chinese Mm -hmm. because they uh, they have their their companies are fully ramped up Mm -hmm. um and uh, basically they're controlling all of the uh or a good portion of the materials needed in order to make evs Mm -hmm. so their price point is going to be able to come in lower and right right. i know that um i know that um forgotten his name um biden is uh you know he's gonna try and do something i don't know exactly what but at the Mm -hmm. end of the day (laughs) if you don't let them import their stuff they might stop exporting their stuff and then right. who's got batteries oh nobody right. who's got uh, who's got the uh, the uh, uh, who owns all the lithium on the planet i mean these mm-hmm. guys uh are in a in the catbird seat mm-hmm. they can dictate now yeah and um and we just have to basically either tow the mark or let them in or something and mm-hmm. uh, that's that's the ones that are i think are yeah. really going to be making a big a big splash here it's an important into, observation uh, in north america you make yeah. i totally agree with you because there'll be that vulnerability that uh, uh opportunity more so yeah because everybody's going to be i think the want and desire for evs are is increasing immensely yeah. but the amount of availability is going to be in short sh- supply for some time one last oem before a uh, final question sandy um i've been following these guys from vietnam the vinfast folks who have been VinFast. doing some stuff yeah okay, what do so- you think of them yeah <laughs> Uh, I think a lot of them. They're also I do one too. Of our, uh, <laughs> they're also one of our biggest customers. Oh, good. There's okay. a company that, mm-hmm. um, like, I can't, I, I'm uh, biased because we've sure. been working with them so much, but mm-hmm. there's a company that is definitely going to come in and clobber a lot. Right. I yeah. can't imagine why, why Canada wasn't in there. Um, I just don't get it. I know. Now they've got their plant going up in North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah. I, uh, a shame yeah. we could have had yeah i've been following them i mean a great great story you know a young company yeah. been building for you know bmws and other in their own product right. ice for a few years have quite a state-of-the-art plant out there right um that can that can still expand up to a, a higher production levels now right. under you know getting into that made usa thing sure let's build a plant in the u.s they're coming hard right. in the global market and if i'm not sure sh- really sold on this battery leasing thing i have to kind of wrap my hands around and see in practicality how that's going to work but my understanding their price point is going to be good for what you get in a you know large to mid-sized to smaller size suv i think the quality is there i mean final thoughts on them yeah Yeah. like i say uh, i know too much about video okay I will. And I'm not 100% no sure conflicts of interest or anything. For, NDAs, for NDAs, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I will tell you that VinFast yeah. is like I try not Good. to go in and talk too much about them, but sure. I'm I'm very very impressed. And yeah. I Good. when yeah. I was in China, um, uh, we went. Uh, uh, my people went in and talked to VinFast, yeah. and uh, uh, and so uh, so from 20 what seven 18, 2018 until now we. So good. I excellent, but yeah, but very fast. Yeah, good to know. Excellent that, car that they, they're yeah. on the radar. So somebody to look at and they're pushing hard. Yeah. We will we'll have pop up uh, like a stores location. Like I think square one here in Mississauga is going to be one of the first yeah. Ontario and they'll be all over the place. So listen for them. My final question to you. I really appreciate your time. I know we've gone a little long. Um, okay. 2030, it was not that far away. A lot of projections by the OEMs, a lot of strategic plans, a lot of numbers floating around. I did a rough calculation myself a couple of weeks ago, figuring where could the market be production-wise for for plugins globally by 2030. And I came up with a number of about 30 million. 
A, a couple of days after I did that, I read a report from Deloitte that said around 29 to 30 million. So I wasn't too far off. Do you think that that's a realistic target too low or too high by 2030? Well, I've been asked to do similar things. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, I said that by 2030, 50% of the market share of new cars sold will be electric. So that electric. would be 35 to 40 to 45 million on average, right? right? Where we are yep. for LDVs globally. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. then, uh, but since then, things have gone uh, quite a bit faster than I thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at, uh, say, places like, like Norway, where you got 70 or 80% of the vehicles being That's sold right. are EVs. Yep. England, where they, uh, or Britain, U yep. United Kingdom, yep. where they've said, um, hey, if you've got, uh, by 2025, we don't want, we don't want you to uh, be uh, polluting everything. That's and then right. Bentley yeah. and Rolls Royce right. <laughs> are, are producing uh, electric vehicles and mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, here's the deal. I, I, I had to move it back. I said 2030 would be the crossover point. I have to I have to say now that it's probably about 2028. Wow. That's where okay. it's going to be. And, I, okay. and the reason for that is because the kids that I was talking about that are growing up mm -hmm. are not going to buy a nice vehicle. They just mm -hmm. won't. They'll buy anything they can and they don't care about whether it came from China or Vietnam or or anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to buy what they can afford and what uh, they feel is the morally correct car to buy. So mm -hmm. that's where I am. I I think 2028 you're going to see a crossover and there's going to be some wreckage um in, in between. So interesting. Well, some of these car companies that you see now are going to disappear or get yeah. a lot smaller. Uh, <clears throat> well, I really hope that we hit that target because, you know, we do need to move the yard six faster um, yeah. than we are, you know, for, and, and it's not just Canada, U S uh, you know, there's a lot of other countries. So this movement needs to happen is happening in other sectors of transportation, including public and rail and airline right. and boats. And I mean, it's, it, you know, there's scooters. I mean, that's another, talk show just talking about you know motorcycles in india and stuff like that some of that yeah. marketplace yeah. so it definitely is happening um but i you know i appreciate that um and i think yeah i, I could see your side of that and again if, if it happens even sooner agreed and you know that morally correct i think that's an excellent statement to to put out there as that the new kind of buyer that's going to be hitting right. the streets yeah. and and hopefully the oems their dealers because sometimes that's a bottleneck trying to convince a dealer to sell an EV, hopefully their mentalities will follow that trend. Yeah. Well, on the dealer point, we didn't touch that, but no. one of the yeah. things that, uh, that uh, Stellantis and, uh, and uh, GM are doing is uh, shutting them down. Mm -hmm. They want to get rid of as many dealers as they possibly can. So that's, uh, they understand what's coming down the pike and it's easiest. The easiest way is to, Buy a dealer out right now when you've got the uh, when you've got the money. Right. Uh, get them off, uh, you know, off the books, as it were. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that's kind of yeah. like a, that's the smartest move that I've seen from from those two companies is getting rid yeah. of dealerships. They'll keep some, of course, for supportability because ICE isn't going away. Still, it's going to be around for some time. They'll yeah. need to continue to support vehicles, of course. There's that 15 year law, I believe it is, to continue to have yeah. parts and maintenance and stuff supportability so right. ice vehicles will be around for decades still but in some some yeah. and in some regions of the world of course the change is much slower <laughs> there's infrastructure well, there's not the wealth there's all this other stuff right yeah well the the projection right now is 10 bucks a gallon here in the states wow um coming up um they're almost at uh, that right now in california is it really that? High? Jeez, wow. what a surprise. You know what I really <laughs> like about politics? Uh, we don't need the Keystone Project. Yeah. We're going to nix that. Remember yeah. me. My name is Biden. Okay. Yeah. They'll remember uh, when they're paying 10 bucks a gallon and they could have had basically yeah. no change to anything. If the Keystone Project would have went through um, Russia and their, you know, what is it? Four or billion air, uh, gallons of oil. I can't remember mm -hmm. what the number is. Just astronomical. Number, yeah. yeah, it would have been a drop in the bucket. That's right. That that oil would have come down from Edmonton and um, yeah, whatever. But that's like I said, <laughs> it's hard to find too many politicians with a uh, 
foresight or the brain to figure out what's going on. But I, I, I hear you. I think they saved a couple of lizards. <laughs> there were a few lizards that are very, very happy that they didn't put that through. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole because we're both going to get comments on our sites. Yeah, but, I'm sure. You know, ah, <laughs> what the, let's live it up. If there isn't any right? fun in the world, what the hell? You know, there's no point. In Just stir the pot a little bit and see what happens. Sure, right? why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in respect of your time, Sandy, and and the energy that you, you put out for this, I really much appreciate uh, you taking that time and energy no to problem. talk to me today. It's been uh but really an honor to speak with you because of your in-depth knowledge. I know we could have gone on and on about all kinds of different things because you've got so much stuff that based on experience and, and what you do within your organization. And you're adding so much value in helping the even the average Joe consumer thinking about EVs or thinking about vehicles or OEMs mm -hmm. by doing what you do on the teardowns and the analysis. I've learned so much. I'm not an engineer by trade, but just, you know, as I said off the top, I'm a bit of a car guy. So I kind of get some of this stuff and when you break these things down and signify the importance, I know it's for you know the process and the manufacturing and some of those and cost savings and reductions and efficiencies. But they're they're you know consumers can benefit from that. So uh, uh, yeah. you know then there's the safety side EVs and all this stuff which we didn't even get into. Lots of benefits. But I really appreciate the hard work that you guys and your your company, your team. You've got a great team under you are, are doing a lot of great efforts there. Well, I'm very happy that uh, that I got a chance to talk to you, and um, and um, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Hopefully we'll do it again, and we may meet up at, at an event or two one of these days. Who knows? So well, I look forward, you never look can forward, tell. Never can yeah. tell. The circles yeah. aren't, aren't that big in this industry. No. So no. Again, Same Sandy well. Monroe, Chief Executive Officer, Monroe & Associates, in Inc. Thank you very much for taking the time today, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a good Easter. Yeah. Yes. Happy Easter. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome.